Um, so I'm not really familiar with the new models of film financing, VOD and all these um, yeah. strength and the future of financing and uh, exploitation of films. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about this? Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for such a broad subject and everything. But uh, it's, well, maybe just, just to, to, to give a bit of context into, into where we fit into all of this. We're, I don't know the Milky Way, we're digital distributors mostly. So, so we get involved on films once they have been financed, shot, and distributed. Mm -hmm. and, and we provide a link between rights holders and VOD platforms. And, and we put the films uh, online which generate revenues that we bring back to, uh, to the rights holders uh, from a transactional VOD mm -hmm. point of view. Uh, in comes the subscription-based models, so mm -hmm. Netflix, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, among others, but mostly Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, at least at our level, we're seeing that it changes, uh, it changes the landscape, uh, meaning that a few years back, we were selling content to Netflix as they wanted to have more films for their catalogs in various countries. And progressively, uh, it's becoming harder and harder to sell to them mm -hmm. as we are at the very end of the value chain. So mm -hmm. if we have films that they're looking at to buy, it means that they haven't done their job properly upstream, mm. meaning that the distributor before us would have pitched the film to Netflix for them to buy and the sales agent and most probably the producer. Mm -hmm. And what I think everybody's discussing and I've been noticing is that Netflix is working increasingly with producers directly. I mean, these things are changing and so forth. And the way films are being financed, I think you're probably in a much better position than I am, you being Not a producer. Yet. Not yet. But you've been producing for so many years and yeah. you've produced so many films. In an old style. In yeah. an old style, mm -hmm. but uh, still the style that has been the traditional way of producing movies up until this date, today. Mm -hmm. And the new way of producing films is only starting. Mm -hmm. So you're not late. To I, the party. <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I was told two weeks ago um, by a friend of mine, a, a producer based in Berlin, and uh, he received an eight-page uh, um, synopsis uh, from a writer, uh, and she uh, presented these eight pages to Netflix, and they told uh, her to find a production company. Mm -hmm. So uh, she got in touch with him. Mm -hmm. uh, asking him, would you like to produce this mm -hmm. for Netflix? Mm -hmm. yeah? And this is brand new. F and, and he was he, he was smashed about uh, such yeah. a, a direct form. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. We are gonna acquire your idea if you will find the right production company, and we are gonna negotiate uh, what will what we are coming up uh, to finance uh, the project. Yeah. yeah. And this is a, a brand new model. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, for the public broadcasting system in Europe, it's, go it's going to get a hard time. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. But, but the, the, the position of public broadcasters or you know, um, and private uh, broadcasting groups in, in Europe, free TV or pay TV, I think is, is, is very fragile at the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and as time goes by, it will become even more fragile, mm -hmm. given the fact that they all operate on one country. Mm -hmm. Very few of them cross borders. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't have the same firepower as an Amazon or a Netflix or an Apple mm -hmm. has in terms of subscription base and mm -hmm. means in order to invest into content. Mm -hmm. uh, f free air broadcasters rely on publicity that's also migrating online or on Facebook or mm -hmm. in other forms of, of, of announcement and so forth. So they're all in very fragile positions themselves. But this with cinema, we are cinema lovers. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and to, to marry with, <laughs> with somebody else yeah. who is not original, coming from a cinema system or yeah. uh, are not cinema lovers, yeah. this is also a question. But, 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 but then again, think of it this way. Like I grew up as a music lover as well, yeah. but yeah. I used to listen to audio tapes and I would make my own mixes on audio tapes Hundreds. and like copy yeah. and so yeah. forth. And then CDs came along and I still was a music lover when the CD came about. And today I have Apple Music that streams and... I'm still a music lover in that, that environment as well. And I think for cinema, it's the same thing. Yeah. The, the love of the content, whatever the format, I'll still find that, 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 that content that moves me, that mm -hmm. you know, 
comes and gets me in different ways and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually quite optimistic about the, 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 the quality of the content to come. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the digital world will unleash creative forces around cool. the world. And Super. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh -huh. But I'm also attached to the traditional way of watching a movie in a cinema with people yeah. to have it as yeah. a collective experience. And I don't think that will go away uh -huh. in any way. Uh -huh. Or I hope that it won't. And yeah. I certainly hope that it uh -huh. won't.